Hi, I'm Jerry Robinson, President and Founder of Health for Life. Welcome to Beyond Speed, Health for Life's latest synergistic training program. Let's get right to the point. Unless you're lucky enough to have been coached by a PhD in motor learning, chances are you can be faster than you are. In fact, a lot faster than you are. You see, the same scientific principles can minimize your reaction time whether you're faced with a pitcher about to throw you a fastball or some opponent who wants to reduce you to a lump of unconscious protoplasm. That's what Beyond Speed is all about. The drills on this tape capitalize on those principles to help you develop lightning fast reflexes and incredible movement speed. Martial artists, professional or amateur athletes, law enforcement officers, even members of a special forces unit, in fact, anyone who needs quick reflexes, can benefit from the Beyond Speed drills. If you're not a martial artist, you can perform the drills as is or tailor them to match your unique requirements. We'll give you examples of how to do that throughout the tape. You will find that some of the drills seem to train the same response. Well, one of the most important aspects of reflex training is unpredictability. Once a drill becomes predictable, it's no good to you anymore. You have to change the drills regularly to keep yourself guessing and provide an appropriate stimulus for continued improvement. Next point. Some of the drills you can do all by yourself. Others require a partner or partners. Follow the instructions for the role you're playing during each drill. Either student, who actually does the drill, trainer, who provides the stimulus for the student, perhaps flashing a hand pad or giving a verbal cue, and when there are several trainers, controller, who gives the trainers their cues. He or she might call out colors, for instance, that uh, represent different moves the trainers are supposed to make. Anyone can act as student, trainer, or controller. In fact, it's a good idea to trade off because the trainer often gets as much out of the drill as the student. One more thing. Before we get started, you need to be clear on the difference between reaction time and movement time. Reaction time is the interval between a stimulus, like a fist starting to move toward your face, and the beginning of your response, slipping the punch, countering, or whatever. Movement time, on the other hand, is the actual amount of time it takes you to execute your response. Reaction time itself has several components. One, identifying the stimulus. Here comes a lead jab. Two, choosing a response. I'm gonna get out of the way. And three, programming the response. That's getting your nervous system ready to execute it. Beyond Speed aims to increase your quickness for all components of reaction time and movement time. In general, the beginning drills improve reaction time. The more advanced ones slash both reaction time and movement time. Before each exercise, there's a screen that tells you which component the drill addresses. Use that information to choose drills to overcome your individual weaknesses. Okay, here's what's coming up. Mark Hoffman, a member of Health for Life's research staff, will be co-instructing for the rest of this tape. We'll start by covering all the drills that make up the Beyond Speed program. These fall into four categories. Footwork, recognition, evasion, and striking. Tape two in this series includes three additional categories, countering, hand speed, and what we're calling full toolkit. After covering the drills, we'll explain exactly how you integrate speed work with your training for maximum results in minimum time. That's it. Let's get to it. The following four evasion drills are designed for martial arts, but may be adapted to any sport, such as football, that involves dodging an opponent. All four require evading balls of one sort or another. No matter how fast you are, you're going to get hit, so stick with balls made of foam or other soft material. For ball toss number one, the trainer holds one or more balls in each hand. Then, using a quick hand snap, he throws one of the balls at the student's head. The goal is simple. Don't get hit. Try to make the smallest movement possible in getting out of the way. On level two, the student starts with eyes closed, then opens them. At that moment, the trainer throws one of two balls at the student. The student tries to evade. Level three uses two trainers with a ball in each hand. They toss the balls one at a time. The student evades.
To enhance this drill, the trainers can stand further apart, move closer to the student, give the student a verbal cue to open their eyes, or use broken rhythm. Ball toss 2 increases the complexity by forcing you to see the color before you choose an action. For level 1, the trainer throws a single ball. The student must do one of the following. Either evade the red ball, catch the green ball, or parry the yellow ball. Once again, work for economy of motion as you execute your response. Yellow, parry block. Green, catch block. Red, evade. On level 2, the trainer throws one of two balls at the student. Once again, the student evades, catches, or parries, depending on the color. Here the student has less time to react because the trainer's arms are already up when the ball is thrown. Level 3 is like level 2, except the student starts with eyes closed, then opens them. When the student's eyes open, the trainer throws one of two balls, the student responds. On level 4, two trainers throw four balls, one at a time. The student responds as before. To enhance this drill, the trainer can throw two balls in quick succession, start hands moving before the ball toss, or use broken rhythm. Here we see this drill adapted to a law enforcement situation. The trainer offers his ID, then takes from his pocket a key, a wallet, a knife, or a gun. The student practices recognizing and responding to the object displayed. You can substitute any response you want to practice. Yo-yo ball is the only evasion drill you can do alone. You suspend a rubber ball from a string in front of a wall. Then you throw the ball against the wall and slip the rebound. In demonstrating, this student is throwing the ball with minimum force. You should use enough force to make it a challenge to get out of the way. On level two, start with your eyes closed. As you open your eyes, throw the ball and slip the rebound. Level three is like level two, but you throw the ball with your eyes closed and open them on the sound of impact. Once again, the drill is being demonstrated at a low intensity level. Level four is like level three, but this time you punch the ball instead of slipping. To enhance this drill, throw harder, stand closer to the wall, or lower the ball to shoulder or chest level. Dodgeball is an intermediate level version of ball toss one and two. Level one begins with a trainer disguising his ball toss with some rhythmic motion. On level two, the trainer quickly throws both balls in a one-two fashion. The student evades. Level three involves two instructors throwing four balls one at a time. The student evades. The trainer should agree beforehand on the order in which they will throw the balls.
On level four, the student starts with eyes closed. Two instructors, each holding two balls, give verbal cues and throw the balls at the student, one at a time. Again, the student evades. As before, the trainer should agree on the throwing order. Go. 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 To enhance this drill, the trainers can stand either closer or further apart, toss the balls in quick succession, or trade off who cues and who throws. All the drills in this section can be adapted for any sport requiring quick footwork in response to some external stimulus, such as an opponent lunging at you. You will need a variety of rubber balls that have different bounce characteristics and also a flashlight. Instant defense is one of the simplest footwork drills. The trainer and student stand facing one another. The trainer issues progressively more subtle cues. In all cases, the student takes one step back into either lead and assumes an on-guard position. Other responses could be palm strike, a kick, a throw, or whatever your style favors. On level one, the trainer takes one step forward as the stimulus. On level two, the trainer reaches toward the student with either hand as the stimulus. On level three, the trainer merely changes facial expression. And on level four, the trainer tenses muscles as if preparing to attack. Enhance this drill by raising the student's stress level. Stand closer, have the student start with hands in pockets, or surprise the student by flashing a weapon, tossing an object, or shouting. In point, the trainer provides different cues, some verbal, some visual, and the student responds with different footwork. On level one, the trainer points left, right, back, or forward. The student moves in the direction of the point. On level two, the trainer says left, right, back, or forward. The student moves in the corresponding direction. Left, right, forward, back, back, left, right, left. On level three, the student begins with eyes closed. The trainer snaps fingers and then points. The student opens eyes on hearing the snap, then moves in the direction of the point. Level four is just like level three, except the trainer continually moves around the student. This results in the student making two moves, one to orient toward the snap, a second to move in the direction of the point.
To enhance this drill, the trainer can cue compound moves or have a controller give the audible command as the trainer gives the visual one. Here we see this drill adapted to baseball, soccer, football, and tennis. In each case, the trainer provides the stimulus, simulating the path of an incoming ball, and the student responds with the appropriate movements for the sport. Square dance is one of the most basic footwork reaction drills. The trainer makes simple movements, the student copies. On level one, the trainer should stand in front of the student and allow plenty of time for the student to register and mimic the foot movement. The trainer should use little or broken rhythm on this level. The student should try to maintain a constant distance from the trainer throughout the drill. Level two is the same as level one, except the student and trainer face each other and the student mirrors. On level two and above, the trainer should begin to use broken rhythm. As shown here, the trainer may increase the level of difficulty by doing two or more steps without a break. Once again, the student should attempt to keep the distance to the trainer constant. In level three, the trainer uses two types of footwork, and the student mirrors. You can use any footwork you like with this drill. Here, you see the combination of step and slide and push shuffle. Because the student must now recognize the move before responding, the trainer should slow down until the student gets comfortable with the drill. In level four, the instructor combines two types of footwork into compound movements. Pick up the pace considerably once you reach this level. The trainer should continually increase speed so that the student has difficulty keeping up. To enhance this drill, the trainer can allow angular as well as side-to-side -side and forward and back movements, speed up, and use broken rhythm. You can use this drill to train for any sport involving footwork. For merry-go-round, the student circles around the trainer. The trainer gives a visual cue, a verbal cue, or both. On level one, the cue is clenching a fist. In drills where the goal is increased speed of reaction, as opposed to movement, the specific moves are not that important. The objective is to foster Zen's no mind state. Where you don't anticipate, you merely respond. Achieving the no mind state will increase your reaction speed in all situations, involving both simple and complex responses. On level two, the trainer calls out switch as a stimulus. Switch, 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 switch. On level three, the trainer calls out switch and also one or two. The student changes direction and throws a left punch on one, a right punch on two. Okay. Switch one, switch two, switch two. Switch two. Switch one. Switch two. On level four, the trainer clenches a fist and calls out either one or two. As on level three, the student changes direction and throws a punch. Leave a small pause between the visual and verbal signal. One. Two. One. One. 
To enhance this drill, the trainer can give visual and verbal commands simultaneously or call out actual techniques for the student to execute. The solo wall bounce is one of the few footwork drills you can do by yourself. You need a large wall and a collection of rubber balls. For level one, throw the ball against the wall and then catch it out in front. Use two bounce patterns to vary the trajectory. You should be throwing hard enough to cause yourself to miss 30% of the time. On level one, you use a large high bounce ball and throw and catch the ball with both hands. Note the change of bounce pattern every few throws. On level two, use a smaller, harder ball to make the target faster moving and more difficult to catch. Throw and catch the ball with the same hand. Switch hands every few throws. On level three, you start facing away from the wall and throw the ball over your shoulder. You can make this level particularly tough by not being careful about throwing the ball straight back. As on level two, throw and catch the ball with the same hand and trade off hands every few throws. On level four, wait for the sound of the ball striking the wall before turning around. As with many of the Beyond Speed drills, you control the level of difficulty. If you don't make the drill tough for yourself, you won't get much out of it. To make the drill more difficult, use an uneven wall, move closer or throw harder, or have a partner throw several balls with different bounce characteristics. This drill works for sports involving a ball and fast hand-eye coordination. First level, with trainer throwing against an uneven wall and the student facing the wall. Second level, with the student facing away from the wall. and third level with the student starting with eyes closed and reacting to the sound of the ball against the wall. You need a darkened room and the flashlight with an on-off push button for this drill. During all levels, the trainer stands slightly behind the student, flashing quick bursts of light on the wall. On level one, the trainer flashes one of forward positions, left, right, high center, or low center. The student moves left, right, forward, or back. High center, forward. Right. Right again. Low center, backward. Left. Low center, backward. High center, forward forward again. On level two, the trainer again flashes left, right, high center, or low center. The student responds with slightly more difficult moves. Pick appropriate ones for your own style or sport. We're going to use angling footwork, a jump, and a duck. Angle, duck, jump, angle, duck, jump, duck. On level three, the trainer flashes in one of six positions, high left, low left, high right, or low right, center low, or center high. The student responds with one of six moves, bobs and weaves, right to left, leg block to the left, bobs and weaves to the right, leg block to the right, stepping back, or ducking. Leg block, bob and weave, leg block, Bob and weave, duck, step back, bob and weave, leg block, step back, bob and weave. On level four, the trainer again flashes in one of six positions, but this time the positions are different. High left, medium left, low left, high right, medium right, or low right. The student responds with a cover and a strike. Cover and cross. Cover and low cross, 
leg block, roundhouse, cover and jab, cover and low hook, leg block, roundhouse, cover and jab, cover and cross, leg block, roundhouse, cover and jab, cover and cross, leg block, roundhouse. To enhance, the student can stand closer to the wall and use peripheral vision, respond to a long or short flash with a compound move, or stay in motion. The four levels of dancing flash are the same as the four levels of fast flash, with one exception. The trainer basically keeps the light moving, but occasionally stops it. Based on where the light stops, the student responds. Here's what level four looks like. Cover and cross, cover and low cross, leg block roundhouse, leg block roundhouse, cover and hook, cover and cross, leg block roundhouse. To enhance this drill, apply any of the techniques listed here. For this drill, the trainer has given one of the students code words for footwork. The trainer calls out a code. The student who knows the code responds. The other student mirrors. Use whatever codes or moves you like. One, two, three. This drill allows four, two students to get a reaction two, at the same time. Three, four, two, one, two, one, four. Four, three, three, two, one. On level two, the trainer has given the students different code words for the same footwork. The trainer should make sure the students don't know each other's codes. Again, the trainer calls out a code. The student who has that particular code responds. The other mirrors. One, A, two, A, two. B, 3, C, 1, A, 2, B. Level 3 is just like level 2, except both students begin with their eyes closed. On the verbal cue, both students open their eyes and move. There's a natural tendency to visually orient before moving, even when it's not necessary to complete the move. The trainer needs to encourage the initiating student to move immediately on hearing the verbal cue. One, A, C, four. On level four, both students are already in motion when the trainer gives the verbal cue. One. One, A, one, A. You can also do this like level three. The students keep their eyes closed except when responding to the verbal cue. One, one, A. To enhance this drill, increase complexity using any of the coding schemes listed here. Here's the same drill with kickboxers throwing roundhouse Eight. kicks. Two. The following recognition drills speed up your ability to recognize specific techniques and spot available openings. You will need a TV with VCR and a focus glove. In all levels of this drill, the trainer stands square facing the student with arms extended out to the side. 
The student faces the trainer standing as close as possible so that the trainer's hands are at the extreme limits of the student's peripheral vision. For level one, the trainer simply makes a fist with the left or right hand and the student calls out left or right. When you do this drill, focus on the center of the trainer's chest and try to maintain a diffuse view of the whole scene. Left, left, right, 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 left, left, right. On level two, the trainer makes either a fist or a knife hand with either the left or right hand. The student calls out left and right and the hand position. Right knife, right fist, right fist, left knife, left knife, left fist, left fist, right knife. In level three, the trainer starts with hands down then raises one or the other making a fist or knife hand. Do the drill at a progressively faster pace. Again, the student calls out left or right and the hand position. Right knife. Right fist. Right fist. Left knife. Right knife. Left fist. Right knife. To enhance, the trainer can have the student start with eyes closed, then give a verbal cue to open them, keep both hands in motion, and talk to the student while giving hand signals. The big picture uses three trainers. The student is forced to watch all three simultaneously. The trainers provide a stillness by speaking, making a noise, or moving. The student responds by quickly pointing at the source. Hey. Hey. Hip. You. Hey. Here. What? Up. Up. Hey. Up. Hey. Now we're going to do level two. The trainers give the stimulus in quick one-two combinations. Hey, yep. hmm. Now we're going to do level three. The same stimulus pattern is used. This time the student begins with their eyes closed. Hey. 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 Hey! 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 To enhance this drill, apply any of the techniques listed here. To adapt this drill for law enforcement use, each trainer holds keys, knife, and gun. The student must watch all three and identify the item each trainer reveals. To increase the difficulty, the trainers stand further apart. In Call It As You See It, the trainer shadow boxes at various speeds and levels of complexity. The student watches closely and calls out the trainer's moves. On level one, the trainer only uses three strikes. We're going to use jab, cross, and hook. Jab, jab, cross, hook, jab, cross, jab, hook, hook, jab, jab, cross, hook, jab, cross, jab, cross, hook, hook, jab, by hook, hook, jab, cross, hook, cross. On level two, the trainer adds two more strikes, uppercut and back fist. Jab, jab, cross, uppercut, back fist. Jab, cross, hook, hook, uppercut, cross, jab, back fist, back fist. Jab, jab, uppercut, jab, cross. Jab, jab, cross, back fist, back fist. 
jab, hook, up cut, j cross, hook, hook, back fist, back fist, jab, cross, up cut, cross, hook, back fist, back fist, back fist, cross, back fist. Level three uses the same strikes as level two, but the student starts with eyes closed. The trainer throws a single strike when the student's eyes open. Jab. Cross. Back fist. Up cut. Hook. Jab. Back fist. Back fist. Hook. Level four is like level three, except that the trainer cues the student to open their eyes. Go. Jab. Go. Cross. Go. Back fist. Go. Hook. Go. Up cut. Go. Cross. Go. Back fist. Go. Hook. Go. Hook. The trainer can increase difficulty by shifting stances or position while the student's eyes are closed, throwing combinations, or including leg techniques. This time, the trainer shadow boxes, and the student practices quickly recognizing the different moves. For the student, the response is not nearly as important as staying focused and seeing quickly. For level one, the student counts how often the trainer used a right hand strike. Five. Four. Six. For level two, the student counts how often the trainer uses a circular punch with either hand. Two. Five. Four. For level three, the student counts how often the trainer used a three punch combination. For level four, the student counts how often the trainer stepped in before striking. Four. You can enhance this drill by having the student start with eyes closed and increasing the complexity of the moves he or she must identify. During shout, the trainer shadow boxes just using hand strikes. The student watches for different openings and specific moves, then yells, go. On level one, the student watches for head openings. Go, 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 go. On level two, the student watches for foot plants. Go. 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 On level three, the student watches both for head openings and foot plants. Go. 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 Go, 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 go. On level four, the trainer is your television. You watch footage of a sparring session or competition and call out when you see any opening. Go. Go, go, go. Go, go, go. 
Go, 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 go. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Go. To enhance this drill, shout out the technique that creates the opening or an appropriate counter technique. In this drill, the trainer stands in an on-guard position and then presents the student with an opening. The student calls out the appropriate strike to take advantage of the opening. Jab. Hook. Jab. Uppercut. Cross. Jab. Hook. Uppercut. Jab. Jab. Cross. Hook. Uppercut. Hook. Now we're going to do level two. The student begins the drill with eyes closed. The instructor gives a verbal cue and then presents an opening. Go. Jab. Go. Hook. Go. Cross. Go. Uppercut. Go. Jab. Go. Cross. Go. Hook. Go. Hook. Go. Uppercut. Now we're going to do level three. This is just like level one, but here the instructor presents brakes in his on-guard position rather than hand signals. Hook. Uppercut. Hook. Jab. Hook. Hook. Uppercut. Hook. Cross. Hook. Uppercut. Jab. Level four is a combination of levels two and three. The student begins the drill with eyes closed. The instructor gives a verbal cue and then presents breaks in his on-guard position. Go. Hook. Go. Hook. Go. Uppercut. Go. Jab. Go. Hook. Go. Cross. Go. Hook. Go. Uppercut. Go. Hook. Level five is like level four, except with compound breaks in the on guard position. Go. Hook. Uppercut. Go. Jab. Hook. Go. Uppercut. Hook. Go. Jab. Uppercut. Go. Hook. Hook. Go. Uppercut. Hook. At lower levels, the trainer can increase the difficulty by flashing compound hand positions. At upper levels, by moving left to right while the student's eyes are closed. Here we see sing out used to improve recognition during jujitsu training. Yakikubi. Adaka. Osoro. Ochi. Yakikubi. You can do this one all by yourself. Hang a piece of paper from the ceiling at home near your TV. Then watch a show or a video with a whole lot of camera angle changes. Action movies work really well. Every time the scene shifts, finger jab at the paper. That's level one. For level two, pick two cues. Perhaps the scene changes and a particular character smiling. Finger jab on either cue. For level three, watch an actual fight sequence. 
Pick one of the opponents and strike the paper each time the opponent you picked attacks. For level four, pick two punch combinations. Strike the paper with the first combination when the first fighter attacks, and the second combination when the second fighter attacks. To increase difficulty, use two targets and different stimuli. Swing the target, use more complex responses, or respond based on strikes with a particular hand. You can use these four drills to increase reaction and movement speed for all strikes, and always modify the drills to use hand or foot moves of your choice. You will need focus gloves, access to a heavy bag, and a variety of colored balls like those used for the evasion drills. Listen Up forces the student to associate one of two distinctly different sounds with one of two different reactions. The student begins all levels with the eyes closed. When the trainer gives a signal, he positions the focus glove for one strike. On level two, the trainer moves to the right or left before issuing the verbal cue. The student opens eyes, orients to the cue, and strikes. On level three, the trainer moves anywhere around the student, then issues the verbal cue. Again, the student opens eyes, orients to the cue, and strikes. On level four, the trainer uses two verbal cues. Depending on the cue, the student responds with one of two strikes. Level five is like level four, but the trainer moves around the student while issuing the cues. To enhance the drill, use two mitts. Move before the student opens eyes, or use a controller to give the verbal cue. Trainer moves independently. Heavy bag flash is unique. It's the only drill that allows reflex training at full power, with no risk of injury to the trainer. The trainer stands behind heavy bag and provides various cues. The student responds with various strikes. On level one, the trainer extends a hand, either high or low, the student strikes the bag with the opposite hand, at the same height as the cue. On level two, the trainer slaps the bag, either high or low. Again, the student responds by striking the other side. On level three, the trainer slaps the bag either high or low. The student responds by striking the other side, using a punch for a high cue and a kick for a low cue.
Level four is just like level three, but the student starts with eyes closed. To enhance this drill, shuffle while waiting for the stimulus, use double taps for double hits, use two or three taps for combinations, or swing the bag. When adapting the drill to other activities, substitute applicable stimuli and responses. Here, a jiu-jitsu student responds to particular opening moves with appropriate counters. Fast grab is just what it sounds like. Two students are sitting at a table facing one another. They should be looking at the tabletop. The trainer specifies which hand to grab the ball with and then drops a ball on the table. Each student tries to grab the ball first. Here's level one. Right. Right. Left. On level two, the students start with their eyes closed and open them when they hear the ball hit the table. On level three, rather than dropping a ball, the trainer places two different colored balls on the table. He then calls out a color as a stimulus. Pink. Pink. Green. Level four is just like level three, but this time the students start with their eyes closed. Green. Pink. Green. Yep. And level five is just like level four, but the trainer uses three balls instead of two. Yellow. Green. You can arrange the balls differently to increase the difficulty. Green. Once again, a different arrangement. Green. You can also increase difficulty by having the students clasp hands, play patty cake, or crouch with hands on knees between stimuli. Evasive focus glove involves two students and one trainer. One student wears focus gloves, the other bag gloves. On level one, the first student positions the focus glove and the trainer says, go. The second student tries to hit the glove before the first student can move it out of the way. Go. 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 On level two, the first student positions both focus gloves. Again, the trainer says go. The second student tries to hit either glove the first student tries to evade, but can only move one glove out of the way. Go. 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 
Level three is like level two, except the trainer issues a visual cue. To enhance the drill, the students can start with eyes closed. The mid-holder can shift position after the other's eyes are closed, or both students can keep their hands in motion. Go. Here is the same drill with several different Go. collie techniques. First, on the trainer's Go. verbal cue, one student goes for a knee okay, strike. Switch. The other executes a stop hit to the attacker's arm. Go. 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 Second, on cue, Go. one student strikes to the shoulder, Switch. the other deflects. Go. Remember, you can use any moves Go. you like. Switch. Go. 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 In this final, more difficult adaptation, Go. the defender is already in motion. On cue, the attacker goes for the hit. The defender Go. blocks. Switch. Go. Go. Just to give you an idea how the basic drills on this tape ultimately become part of advanced reaction work, here's a sample from tape two. This drill, called Quick Kick, builds on our earlier drills involving quickly seeing an opening and drilling a specific response. The student and trainer square off. The student begins with a probing technique, such as a flicking lead jab. The trainer offers an opening. The student kicks into the opening with the previously chosen counter technique. The drills we've just covered are the building blocks of Beyond Speed training. We recommend two approaches to putting them together. Pick the one that best matches your needs. Option one, choose a drill from each exercise category, selecting the easiest drills first. Do those exercises for two to three minutes apiece at the beginning of each skill training session. To avoid staleness, pick new drills every third workout. Option two, choose several drills from the single category in which you're weakest. Again, do those drills for two to three minutes. Over time, work your way up through the levels of those drills until they're burned into your nervous system. A quick note. Remember, the key to any reaction drill's effectiveness is unpredictability. If you know exactly when the stimulus is coming and what it's going to be, there isn't much reacting to do. That means option two won't work for any of the one-person drills where, through repetition, you get so good at issuing the stimulus that you issue it exactly the same way every time. For example, you'll eventually get so good at the wall bounce that you'll know where the ball is going to go. At that point, the drill loses its value and you need to move on to another exercise. Once you've chosen one of the two routines options and picked your exercises, next step is to integrate reaction work with the rest of your training, with your stretching, running, flexibility exercise, and so on. The guiding principle here do reaction work after you're warmed up, but while you're still fresh. The reason? It's difficult to train subtle patterns into your nervous system if you're tired. Based on that guideline and other Health for Life principles, the best general overall training sequence is warm up, aerobic training, skill work, which includes reflex and reaction time training, weight training or other conditioning work, and finally, flexibility work. That sequence will ensure that you get the most out of each part of your training. That's all there is to it. Don't be deceived by the apparent simplicity of these exercises. The proof is in the performance. No matter how experienced you are, the drills will boost your skills to a level that will surprise even you, not to mention your opponent. Victories are won in fractions of a second. Combine the speed and reaction time benefits of these drills with already solid technique, and you'll have an unbeatable advantage. Until next time, happy training.